Welcome back. Now we're going to go over Cloudinit in Azure. So Cloudinit is not is not specific to Azure. Cl Cloudinit is a can work on AWS and other other pro cloud providers as well. Uh, but what basically what Cloudinit does is allow you to customize a virtual machine after it has been provisioned, meaning after the the machine's been created, up and running. So right right when it gets you know, up and running. After that, it's going to run some cloud in it, which can do some configuration on the server. You know, the configuration can be a lot of different things. You know, you could you could install your web server code, your web application code to the server. You could add users. You could install packages. Uh, you can do a lot of different things with that. Uh, and, and it's very helpful, especially when you do when you get when you get to auto scaling, which you'll see in some future videos. Because you, you want the auto scale, scaling to be automated and you don't know how many machines, you, if you're going to need two machines or a hundred machines, you can't just load everything on those machines manually. You need to automate that and that's where Cloudinit can come in to play. So let's, let's, let's go back and let's just create a basic virtual machine. Um, let's just set up some very basic stuff. Let's just do... Cloud init example. We'll just keep we'll keep everything to de default. Oh, and one thing about Cloud init, it it's not not depending on what image you choose here. So the images here, um, not not all images have the ability to do Cloud init. So right now, as of this video, these are the available images that have Cloud init installed. So we're using Ubuntu eighteen right now. So it is installed there, and then there's uh, like CentOS 7.6 here. Um, so if you don't see CloudInit available, that that that's why. Uh, so we've got that. So perfect. We're just gonna keep all these defaults. Let's just do um, set a password. Keep that. Um, let's go to disks. We're just gonna keep everything the default. We're not really worried about this. We've already gone over virtual machines. So we'll just do, we can probably do this. We're, we're piggybacking off of our existing stuff. We'll have it create a new IP because we've used our IP. We've already used our IP. Um, so let's do that. We can skip this. So now we have CloudInit here. So you see how we have this, this text area? If you don't have this text area here, that means the image you chose is not available for CloudInit. So let's see. So what we can do, so, so some very basics about CloudInit is going to be, let's just, let's just go over what we used before to provision a, a web server. So you need to have the, the first, um, this first comment here. So this is a YAML file, essentially, that's running. So, and what CloudInit can do is it allows you to, you know, so, so you see here we have an Nginx package. So if we selected Ubuntu, which uses apt package manager, this will work. And if we use CentOS, which uses yum, this would also work as well. So CloudInit will determine what what type of server we're running, and it will do everything for us in the background. So we don't have to worry about you know. So this this will just work on Ubuntu or CentOS without us having to change anything, which is which is nice. So basically, your package upgrade here that means it's going to run like uh, apt apt update essentially. Uh, but now we're installing nginx, Node, and npm here with packages. If we want to write files, so here we're basically writing our web server file. So we're going to, we're setting the owner of the file here, and then what? Where do we want to? Um, where do we want this file to be? And then here the content of the file. So this this block right here is going to get output to this file here. Same thing here. We have another file. And that com content. 
you probably won't use the right files much. Um, this is kind of an example. What you mainly use is going to be the packages, but even packages could be used for, for Ansible, um, which we'll go over in just a second. But in the run command, the run command is probably going to be um, something very useful as well. So you can see here we ran service nginx start or restart. So we started the, the nginx server. We cd'd to the, these are just like bash commands. So we cd to our app directory, npm init, npm install, and then here we started the node application, which then is serving our, our, our application so we could view it. Um, so yeah, so with cloud init, like what you might do sometimes is, you know, you might be using Ansible, which if you're not familiar with Ansible, you can, you can research it a little bit, but Ansible just allows you to easily configure servers, you know, configure the inside of servers. So once the infrastructure is built, Ansible can use to can be used to, to configure the insides of the server and install a bunch of software and, and do do things like that. So so what this could this cloud net could do, you might just have like one or two lines in this, which might just run a command that says like um, check out my my Ansible GitHub repository. And then what it could do is then that might be set on a cron job to run or um, you can just run it one time and then it'll configure itself uh, out um, and everything. So Ansible will do all the configuration. We would just use cloud init to, um, you know, run, get that initial code that we need. Yeah, so that, that's the base of the cloud init. Um, so basically you can, you can just take this and copy and, and paste it here. And I've already ran this in, in the previous one of the previous videos, so I'm not going to run this. Um, but basically, that will just configure a web server, and and then you can just run it. And we will go over ex, uh, virtual machine extensions next, because like I said before, if your operating system or the the image you chose does not support CloudNet, you can you can use extensions to do some configuration as well.